How do histamine sensitivities and or sulfur sensitivities manifest on the LRA? Are they a true immune response? And is there any need for a low histamine or low sulfur diet? Well, again, this is a very interesting and rather complex question. The question is, in regard to histidine, uh, histamine or histaminic type, histamine comes from histidine. So the amino acid histidine, when it is decarboxylated, when it loses its acid group, it becomes histamine. And histamine is a sensitizing molecule. That means it, from a molecular point of view, it goes out and tickles cells like basophils, eosinophils, the cells we associate with histaminic reactions, hives, wheezes, itching, anaphylactic reactions and shock, all of which you want to avoid. Now that led Dr. Carl Pfeiffer in the 1970s to the idea, the hypothesis, that there were three types of people, people who were high histamine, then there were the majority of people, two thirds or more, were not high, not low in histamine, and some people were low. And he called the people who were high histamine people histidilic, and the people who were low histamine histopenic. Now, this may be more history lesson than you want to know about the clinical manifestations of histamine, but the idea that some people were very sensitive, they were high histamine by nature, led to the idea that if you took in, quote, low histamine producing foods, that that would be better for you. Now, what are the foods that are associated with more histamine? Well, red wine, good um, cheese that has never been pasteurized, um, it turns out there are a number of certain seeds and nuts. And so people who are, who consider themselves high histamine, and I'm going to comment in a minute about <clears throat> the, the thought, the concept, the idea. The people who think they're high histamine are often advised to reduce their intake or minimize their intake of, quote, histamine-related foods. When I ran the Princeton Bio Center back in the early 1990s, one of the things we did, Arthur Soler, the statistician who worked at the center, went through thousands and thousands of analyses, and he came to the conclusion that there might be a high histamine, a mid and a low histamine group, but it was so hard to measure histamine accurately that most labs that offered a histamine test, histamine test, did not do it properly. In other words, the specimen had to be obtained and almost immediately put on wet ice. Then it had to be very quickly spun. Then it had to be kept away from light once you had separated the plasma and then frozen. And then you could uh, perform the test. 